What's quackalacking guys, I'm a duck quack here and welcome back to another episode in our how to invest and trade and all of that kind of stuff series. So in this episode we're going to be focusing on a little squad builder challenge and it's called marquee matchups. Now the majority of you guys know exactly how marquee matchups work. Every week EA release a SBC consisting of four different parts and it's based on games in the upcoming week. Now, when it started out, it was usually the big games or the marquee matchups, so derbies, so to speak. These days, it can be literally anything, so it's become a little bit more of a gamble. And what we're going to discuss in this episode is how we should be looking at investing in these SBCs. So, we'll start off with the basics. First off, we have to guess which games they're going to be. The best way to do that is either watch videos like I do on my Twitter, on my YouTube, or other YouTubers do, other tweeters do, tweeters, Twitters, whatever you want to call it. Or the best way to do it is do your own research. Look at the fixtures for about a week ahead. Have a look at who's playing who in each of the big leagues. Any big matches, then you can start investing early. Personally, the way I prefer to approach it these days, because everybody's clocked onto it and everybody tries picking players up, we want to pick up the players that are in the lowest amount of uh, supply. So cards that are going to quickly dry up on the market and hence their price are going to rise whether they're included or not. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to base it off looking at the actual four challenges that have come up and we're going to look at how we could have predicted and prepared for them. So the first match we've got Dortmund against Bayern Munich. Now if we jump onto the transfer market here we can see that Dortmund against Bayern are full of gold players. So immediately this investment isn't bad by any means but we're looking for other things to come in our favour. If we search for 1200 coins you can see that there are plenty of options from the Bundesliga but if we put it onto Bayern, um, sorry Dortmund, you can see that you've got tons of options. So picking up your Dortmund player for a thousand coins or eight hundred coins or whatever you want to spend is very very easy. And the reason for that is a lot of them are low rated, a lot of them are easy to get hold of. The Bayern side of it, however, because their players on average are a little bit higher rated, they're going to go for a little bit more. So as you can see, we're looking at over two thousand, over three thousand coins. We're looking, yeah, about 3,000 coins for these players. Now, why is it that the Bayern players are going for so much more than Dortmund? And how could we have invested accordingly? So, we've just looked at it and we've seen that there are tons and tons of Dortmund gold players from low rating up to an average rating. The Munich players, they're much higher rated on average, so they're not going to be submitted into this challenge. That means the few that are lower are going to have a higher demand for them and hence their prices are going to rise more. All of these players could have been picked up for discard when we were investing. So the obvious investment here is we invest in the harder team to get players for, which is Munich. We invest in the highest rated card we can for discard. And then we are going to be golden when it drops. Whether it's Munich, Dortmund or a mixture of the two that's needed, our cards are always going to rise to at least what the Dortmund players rise to. And if it requires a specific buy-in player, they're just going to rise more. So that's how we can focus and that's how we can aim to tackle the big matches that are included in these marquee matchups. Second up, we've got a Calcio A game, a Serie A game. It's Genoa against Sampdoria. Now, you can see here that we need two players from Genoa or Sampdoria. It could be a mixture of the two, so it makes it a little bit easier for us. If that was the same case for the Bayern game, then we wouldn't have seen such a big price range, uh, price increase for Bayern. So if we have a little look at Genoa first off, and I've got a feeling it's not going to be that expensive. You can see a few players listed for 650. If we raise it up to 1,000 coins, you can see a ton of players. Now, there are tons of players, but if you're looking at them, they're all pretty much bronze and silver players until we get to the last minute here, and then we see some golds. The gold players are great because they're used for getting that rating up there. That's why they're always a safer investment if and when they're available. If we jump onto Sampdoria we can see that there aren't quite as many um, bronzes and silvers on the market because they've got a lot more golds. And as you can see here, there are tons and tons of golds. Because of this reason, it just didn't make it an overly profitable investment. Both teams kind of carry the same... In the Dortmund buying game, the buying players went up massively, the Dortmund didn't move too much. It's the same with Sampdoria and Genoa. Both of them fall into the... 
a Dortmund category. So neither of them rose too much just because there's tons of cheap available gold players, bronze and silver. So that much, you kind of hope for really lucky requirements in this matchup. Maybe a higher team rating so you've got to use gold players or maybe one silver player or maybe four players or something crazy. Based on those, that's why I would have avoided that game. There was too many gold players of low rating for both teams and it just made it very hard to find guaranteed profit in the hype. If we move on to the River Plate against Boca Juniors game, for me, it was very much the same as the Genoa Sampdoria game. Loads of gold players available. Well, not loads, but enough gold players available. And then for the requirements to require one player from both teams, you could have sold these guys on hype and that would have been the way to go, but you're just never going to make any money on that. The Argentina players, uh, Argentina players, sorry, is harder to achieve than the actual River Plate against Boca Junior players here. And then the last challenge we've got is the Copenhagen against Bromby matchup. Now, this was my pick of the week last week, and the reason for this is there was a distinct lack of gold players available from both teams. That meant that the bronze and silver players would dry up very quickly on the market, and because of that, they would rise in price before the event even came, and we could just sell on hype, and we'd be very happy with our profits. And why can I not even find it here? Um, what league do they even play in? Why am I going so... Mind blanked. Is it the Super League? It's the Super League, isn't it? God, that took me ages. So if we have a look for gold players for Bromby, there is absolutely nothing. And gold players for Copenhagen, I think there's like four... Oh no, there's one. There's That's why I love this matchup so much. If we're looking for Copenhagen players now, we get them for 600 coins. It isn't 200 coins, sorry. It isn't a problem. But the hype part of this, it gave us a cash out option of about 1500 coins before any event had released. That means we picked them all up for 150 to 200 on bids or buy it nows, and we sold them all for 1500 coins just in hype alone. The real money in this SBC, and this is why we need to think outside the box again. So when we're picking up these players, they're from a Denmark league, a Denmark league, a Danish league. So we wanted to be picking up Danish players ideally. Now it's not something even I spoke about last time, but the requirement of six players, and if we have a look in the Alka Super League. And we jump it on to Denmark and we set it to silver. Then we're looking at very expensive players. They're all about 1500 coins plus, And if they're in the right position, then they sell for stupid amounts. When the SBC was released, for example, I had a few players in my club. I didn't invest in these guys. I invested in all those. But I want to just show you the craziness of what it can do. 9,000 coins for a big centre back. 8,000 coins for a left wing. And that was just a random Copenhagen player I sold in the hype. But that just shows you the potential of fine-tuning the requirements that you pick. So we could have gone for that one. We could have gone for silver players if we got an early enough. That's the benefit of doing your own research. We could have thought about it requiring Danish players because it's a Danish league. And hence, we could have gone for those. That would have, again, massively increased our profit margin. And we could have been on about six, 7,000 coins a player. Yes, it's very hard to predict all of those things. But if we look back in hindsight at what they released... We can predict for future events and change the way that we are investing. So just to recap, guys, with Marquee Matchups, a weekly event that's released with four different games that are happening over the week, we want to be looking at the rating, the nationality, the position of the cards. Remember, if they include a formation that's like 3, 5, 11 or whatever, there's no fullbacks. Or if they include a formation that's 4 and then all down the middle, there's no wingers. So we don't want to get caught out there. We want to be looking at the rating. Like the Bayern Dortmund game, it needs a 79 rating. So 76 rated players aren't quite as great. We want to be looking at which team is harder to pick up and then investing heavily in that team. It doesn't matter because we're going to make the same profit on the players. The only bonus we have is ours could go for higher because there's less supply available in the market. We want to be thinking about how easy it is for people to pick up cards and how likely it is to rise on hype leading up to the event as the supply starts to dry up on the market. Anyway, guys, going to wrap the video up there. It was a little bit messy, I think, but I hope you guys got the picture of it. It just kind of covers how we want to be approaching marquee matchups, where we want to be finding the exact value and all of those little features. If you're still enjoying the series, though, guys, make sure you drop a like. Comment down below if you think I missed any important stuff, obviously. If you're new to the channel, a subscription would be incredible. I'll leave my Twitter in the description, so follow me on there. We're always tweeting out investment stuff. And we've got a link to the Discord channel that has got loads of people in and just crazy investment and trading advice. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.